a rut when it comes to what's for dinner? Well, Dawn might be able to help. Yeah, you know, and Jody, I think you're probably like me and many people out there that when you've had a little bit, uh, well, late in the pocketbook, you've gone to the grocery store, bought like 20 packets of those those powdered packet ramens, mm -hmm. um, and uh, this is completely different than that. It For is. people that wonder about the ramen noodles themselves, if they wanted to use those noodles instead of what you have here, is it different? Well, it, it's quite different. Okay. I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't recommend those um, packaged noodles. You can easily go to a Japanese uh, shop like Fujia and pick up some of these uh, fresh noodles in the freezer section. Much healthier for you. They don't have all the additives and chemicals. And those are deep fried too, those packaged noodles they that you get in those. Oils, so yeah. even if you get rid of the, the powder. Okay, but we're going to make awesome ramen here at Harvest Community Foods. Talk about the ingredients that we have Absolutely. that we're using. So we're doing a classic pork ramen. Uh, some of the main ingredients are going to include pork for your stock. We've got some pork trotters, which are full of collagens and really nice mouthfeel. Chicken bones as well. Um, bonito is part of the umami and the depth that, that we're going to be getting from the um, for the broth. And this is basically a dried fish uh, product. Kombu, uh, this is a seaweed. This is rehydrated, soaked in water overnight. Uh, this is kombu in its dried state. It looks totally different, but it is a sea vegetable from our coast here. And a selection of um, uh, ginger, onion, and garlic are also key to the broth. Talking about this just a little bit too, is this something that you literally put in the broth or is it something, because I mean I'm touching it and it's mm -hmm. something, feels like it's something you could chop up and eat as well. After it's cooked in the broth for six hours, we take it out and you can julienne it up and put it in as garnish. Fantastic. Yeah. Well, coming up, Russ, we are going to be making the broth for the number 39. And you can actually come here to Harvest Community Foods and go, I'll have the number 39. So uh, it's going to be nice and warming because, of course, I understand we have some cold weather coming. Oh, my God. I, 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 no better comfort food in my world, Dawn, than a nice bowl of ramen. And to think that there's 39 choices there and maybe more, that sounds fantastic. Get the comfort food angle on this. How do oh. we stay warm? Exactly, and nothing keeps you more comfortable and warm and nourished than a beautiful ramen soup. And I have to say, Andrea, I was just in Japan over the summer, and ramen, it's all over the place, and people are lining up around the block for it. We're showing people at home how they can make their own, but the broth is super important. It's absolutely key, for sure. So uh, pork and chicken bones, this is the base for this uh, particular stock that we're using. The kombu water, which needs to be soaked overnight. So, so, so again, for people that are just joining us, joining us, that is, that is a local... It's a local uh, seaweed. Seaweed that yeah. actually has been rehydrated, that's and that's right. what it looks like there. Yeah, so we want to soak it overnight so that we get all of the essence of the kombu out. And it's just really key to the umami of the whole dish. Um, some beautiful fresh organic garlic and ginger. And you're putting on, hold on, you're putting in all this stuff and everything. With the garlic, Okay, yes. I thought yeah. you'd have to take off the skins. No, we don't leave the skins off okay. the garlic. Okay. And uh, onions. And that is everything that we need to get it started. So this is going to cook for about six hours. Nice simmer. And uh, after that, it's going to look something like this. So we've got our finished broth here. To this, we're going to add the, um, the uh, flavoring components. So there's generally three types of ramen. There's the shoyu, the shio, or the miso, which is salt, uh, soy, or miso, which is a fermented bean paste. Um, bonito first, for sort of a fermented dried fish. And that where gives can us people get that? Like any, any Asian Japanese market? Yeah, market okay. yeah. Big umami character there. We also add um, the shoyu, or the soy, to this particular one that we make. And we're going to do something a bit different. We're going to use some of the Osaki brand from Granville Island Sake Company. It's um, sort of like using miso, but a little bit different. It's the lees from the sake making process, so it gives you the same sort of body and depth but uh, not made with soybean. I love that. So it's like you make sake and here's what the leftovers are and that's now something you can utilize. Exactly, yeah. So we can pop that in there for a little bit of a different flavor profile. And this is how we finish it. We're going to let the uh, the bonito steep for about 20 minutes. And, and then we're going to finish our ramen. The number 39 is what we're making here at Harvest Community Foods. So coming up in the next segment, we will finish our ramen. Uh, but coming up after the break, how can you start your day? How can you get all the nutrients you need in just one glass? Alyssa Bowman has more coming up next on BT. We'll be right back. Well, there's our beautiful broth that we made here at Harvest Community Foods because it's all about the ramen. Uh, Andrea, what did we do to this broth to kind of get it to the point where it's now? Uh, go? Well, we've strained it, okay. um, finished it, tasted it, seasoning, and now we've got a nice piece of pork shoulder in here that uh, we've heated up with the broth. Our noodles we cooked for about two minutes in boiling water. Strain those off, get those in the bowl. 
and we're just going to pour our broth over top with some of our pork shoulder. And ramen truly is one of those wonderful comfort foods. I mean, it's one of those things that you can almost eat every single day. Certainly you have lots of different varieties yeah. here. What is the most popular? Uh, the pork shoulder ramen this is, is the one of the most this popular, is? Okay. hands down. And uh, we also have, have a lot of people who love our vegetarian options. So we have a nice uh, squash ramen made with, mi with miso. I need so, to address this egg here, yeah. first of all. What did you do to make the egg look like that? Because it almost looks like it's got the um, like the brown egg shell mm -hmm. on it, but it's actually not. It's yeah. peeled. It's uh, It's been soft poached, and then we um, soak it in a mirin and soy combination. So the, the garnish for this can be whatever you want it to be, but for us, we use some nice, uh, nice local watercress from Skipping Rooster, a little bonito, some fresh shaved radishes from North Arm Farm. Um, nori and the uh, the egg. And that's literally the kind of nori that you go and buy when you're making your sushi rolls, exactly. right? Yeah. Um, and very helpful benefits in a lot of these components. We know that nori is very healthy for us mm -hmm. and there are lots of great health benefits to ramen. Absolutely, yeah. Perfect, it's beautiful. And can I just say, I'm taking a taste of this, <laughs> but I was smart. I brought my Tupperware, but you can of course make your way here to Harvest Community Foods. I got a taste this here. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Perfect on a cool day. Oh. I'm gonna come here every day, seriously. That is delicious. <laughs> oh, so good. Tell me, honey, what's a day?